All right. Hello, this is Eugene George, financial wellness specialist, host of the Money and Flow podcast that could be available on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you want to find a podcast. The podcast is there. Today, we're going to be talking during this Financial Wellness Wednesday about something that has been bothering me for the past couple of years. And it's also been a huge aha moment for how I want to run my business. I want to run my personal life and why it's so important to focus on these certain key aspects. So have you ever thought to yourself, oh, I'm a really high achieving person. I, I've gone to school. I've gotten my graduate degrees. I've started my own business. Most of the time, all of these high achieving people that focus on their business, they focus on their career. A lot of us typically forget our, our why, our little why. Like, why are we doing this? Is it for pleasure? Is, is it to find a man or a woman? Is it to be a better person? A lot of us aren't even thinking about that, which is a problem because if we're not really thinking about why we're doing this and what we want, we typically ignore it. So for today's talk, we're going to talk about some of the money mistakes that entrepreneurs make and then also high achieving women make. So we're going to talk about what are the money mistakes that high achieving women as well as entrepreneurs. So most of you are saying, well, what the heck is a high achieving woman? Well, I'm sorry, if you've gone to college and you are literally hustling and grinding for whatever job you are and you're constantly thinking about your social ladder and moving up the rankings, then that means that you are a high achieving woman. So most, there are a lot of women that are like that. That's why there are more women in graduate schools. There are more women in undergraduate. A lot of women are thinking about how can they better their lives? How can they be an individual? If you're an entrepreneur, that must mean that you have started a business. You have a sole proprietorship or you have an LLC. So if you have a sole proprietorship or an LLC, that means you own a business. Or if you have, if you're part of selling essential oils, you're doing something where you're making additional profit for your job. All right. So every single time, let me say this again, every single time that I talk to someone that is very focused, goal-driven, career-driven, it's always the same problems. Like if I could just get this part done, I'd be so much happier. Or uh, this person really bothers me. That's why I'm not getting the raise that I want. Or unfortunately, a lot of people say, because of my ethnicity, this is why I'm not succeeding. And I am going to be honest, I was one of the people that did that. And I think it was a lot of it was because I forgot what my why was. So I thought my why was, okay, I'm going to help women understand getting a crisis, or I'm going to help millennials understand their money. But the truth is, is that I wanted to provide tools for people and resources for people so that if they ever get stuck in a crisis, they will know where to turn. That's like my big why. That's like what I'm really hoping that I do without in the world. Like if somebody needs help with their money and they're broke, then I would say, oh, girl, go to Debtors Anonymous. Or if somebody who was really cared about their families or cared about their um, significant other, I would say, oh, find this financial planner. And they can show you all about their, your health savings accounts. So learning about all of that, that was, that's like my big why. Well, my little why, which is really, really egotistical or selfish, is I want to travel. And so I realized that one of the things that I didn't do when I started a business was travel. So I purchased, but right before I got or right before I quit my uh, a job, I said, okay, I'm going to start this business. But before I start it, I want to make sure that I'm traveling more. I want to make sure that as I'm traveling more, I'm going to be able to meet new people. I'm going to be able to help more people. So I bought a ticket to 
Italy. No, I didn't go to Italy that time. I went to Istanbul. I went to Paris. And then I also went to London. And I did this whole big trip. And I was like, okay, here's the trip. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like, I want to take off. I want to travel. I want to be able to go wherever I want to go. And I want my business to take me to where it needs to go. But unfortunately, uh, when I started my business, I did no traveling. Like I traveled to my friend's wedding and I traveled to, uh, where else did I go? I traveled to California because that's where my family lives. But like, I didn't do any international travel in these past three years. Like this is pathetic. How are you going to start a business and you don't even, you forget what your why is. Like, how are you going to start a business and you forget, oh, this is the thing that's going to fuel me. And that really made me angry and that pissed me off. And that's why I went to some woo-woo person. I was like, look, something's going on spiritually because I'm not doing the thing that I'm supposed to be doing when I started a business. And that's probably the same for a lot of people that are high achievers. They go, like, let's say some of them become principals. They go to become a principal and guess what happens? They make a lot more money. And they're still focused on the work. And when they focus on the work, they're not thinking about how could they help other people? How could they, or actually, they're thinking about how they could help other people. They're not thinking about how they can help themselves. All right. So today, during my paper writing, because I am going to school to get my business degree or MBA or whatever, uh, one of the things that constantly what I thought about and I read about that really was in the back of my mind is there was this question that they asked and it said, uh, how can, if you focused on your money or let's say if you focused on your organization, you ask yourself, which component have you been focusing on the most? Or like, what have you been focusing on with your money, your career? What have you been focusing on? the most. So a lot of people will say their career. Some people say their health. Their entire focus is on their health. A lot of people's focus, I know for a lot of women, are their families. They will put their family first and then they forget the people that they, they're they supposed to help, which is themselves. <laughs> so they put all their focus in helping all these other people, which freaking sucks because all you're doing is draining your own energy because you're not doing your own self-care. So once I started, I asked myself, okay, Eugene, what is the actual question or what is the actual thing that I'm spending my most, the most time in? And the thing that I was spending the most time in was my career. I put all this focus into career and I pretty much isolated a whole bunch of people. And I would turn down contracts because I would say, oh, you know, this is not about the, like, this is not really about the work. And I forgot my why. I, I turned down money. Okay, how is someone trying to be a finance certified financial planner? And I turned down money because I was like, this is not focused on the real why, which is helping people. And it's like, no, boo boo. The focus is you getting money to, so you can go to Montreal too. Like, why are you not focusing on the thing that makes you you? Why are you not focusing on skiing? Why are you not focusing on hanging out with friends? Why are you not focusing on? meeting new people, that, that's my why. So once I looked at that, like the component of my, what am I spending my most time on is my career. Like I pretty much spend eight, hour, eight to nine hours a day focused on the career, focusing on financial coaching, focusing on an MBA, focus on consulting, like all of these pieces I'm focusing on. But it's like, uh, hello, you have a man and you have a man with children. So you're like, now I'm around a six-year-old and 12-year-old, and how come I never even thought about including them into the traveling? Like, why are you not thinking about all of these factors? So once I thought about that problem of what was the component that I was spending my most time on, I said, uh, how can I change my focus to affect my life? So one thing I don't want to talk about, but I have to talk about is that in the past month and a half, I've gained a lot of weight. And the reason why I gained a lot of weight was because uh, I was sad. Like 
I didn't know what was happening. I, I didn't know why I was angry, but I ended up gaining all this weight. I gained like 10 pounds. And I think the problem was I went from weight training to not weight training and like not paying attention to my health at all. And like everything dropped from that experience. So not only did everything drop from that experience, I like isolated myself from friends. I didn't talk to my family that much about what the problems were. And because I didn't talk about what the problems were, uh, guess what? I ended up losing more money. I had to turn down contracts. And thank God, thank God, Pamela, um, she does brunch, brunch and budgets. She's a, 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 she has a podcast, podcast called Brunch and Budgets. I talked to her and she was like, what is your, what the heck's going on? Like, this is not your normal self. This isn't who you are. Like, what the heck? And she called me personally and she was like, this is not who you are. Why are, how come your demeanor has completely changed? And so from that experience, I was like, okay, I really need to find some, someone who is going to see my, there's my, the dog is barking. Sorry about that. But like, how can I put my focus on the thing that matters the most? I don't know what the heck. I have no freaking clue what was happening. So that's what I did. And I've been doing that. I've been doing uh, literally any type of Oprah woo woo thing. I've been doing it. And I've been looking at my numbers and I've been getting very clear with my numbers. And I've been put doing the math to see how much it's going to cost for me to go on these trips. I even sent an email to my friend. I said, hey, when are we going to plan this trip to Alaska? So she said she didn't want to go to Alaska. And I was like, okay. <laughs> So we're not going to Alaska, but I made it a point to actually reach out to my friends and travel. Like, uh, how come I'm not doing the thing that I love? So I wrote out these whole takeaways, all of these pieces to help you understand, like, how can I break from overachieving and my process of overachieving doesn't match my values. My process of overachieving doesn't help me save money or invest more money. I know someone who I love them to death, but they put, they work for an MLM and they put $500 a month into this business and they profit 1000 and they put a thousand back every month back into the business. And there is nothing that actually supports their goals. So this portion, this takeaway is personally for me. And then it's also for other people who is high achieving and they don't, they don't know how to break from the 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 career goal to the why all right so the first one is understand the, the under, little, little, little. understand the difference between profit and income understand the difference between profit and income i don't know why it took me this long i don't know how many business classes i have taken for me to actually understand the difference profit is something that your business can earn so you can make a profit you do a bunch of sales you make a bunch of profits let's say you work at a school if you work at a school the profit is you are helping kids you get money you get paid like or if the profit is going to the school and income so that's like how much money are you actually putting in your bank account that's your income how much money are you actually making so most people when they get there paycheck like let's say their average their um gross pay or their their pay is sixty thousand dollars but then their income is like forty fifty four thousand dollars that's your income so you might be looking at your the business and the business is increasing profit in by like a hundred percent or we've increased the profit by twenty five percent your profit is not your income. And so I didn't think about that. Like, oh, I'm making this amount, this amount of money. This amount of money is supposed to go to the business. But what is my income from it? So if you have like a business or an MLM or what, what have you, think about that. What is the actual income that I'm earning from that? And one of the mistakes that I've made in, in the past is saying, oh, this money, I have to put this money in marketing. I have to put this money in 
finding the next business coach. I have to put this money in because they know what I'm going to need. But the truth is, if you don't know what your why is, they're not going to know how to help you. So, it, and if you don't have money that are, is actually coming into your income, uh, how are you going to, how are you going to actually benefit from that? And I've, what I've noticed too, with a lot of people with, especially with income, a lot of people don't know what to do with their income. So they might be saying, well, I have my income and I really like budgeting. So I just kind of throw the budget away. I don't really focus on, I really just don't focus on my money because I know that my career is soaring. But like if your business fails, if you lose your job, if you, if you get sick and you have no income and you have no disability insurance, that's really going to affect your high achievement. So I, um, I didn't realize that that was actually a problem because I wasn't thinking about my why and I wasn't thinking about my income. I was just focused on the profitability. And that's what a lot of entrepreneurs do too. They'll say, I have a six figure business. I have a seven figure business in my business. I made this amount of money and that's the profit. Yeah, that's a profit. But then your income, what did you put in it? Did you put your money in betterment? Did you put your money somewhere that where you needed to be like, how come your pro your profit is making money, your business is making money, but you're not benefiting from it. So what the heck, why are you doing it? So same if you're like, if you're teaching or if you are a receptionist, your profit, you, you're helping this business do really well by doing great work. You're making phone calls, you're sending emails and the company's doing really well and they're so proud of you and you don't ask for a raise and you don't ask for pay an increase in your, your pay, you know, negotiate because we don't do these things, especially with women. That's why we're behind. And that's why if you think about women of color, if we look at the actual statistics of women of color making money, April 15th is, is the equal pay day. That means they took all the averages of the women's equal pay day. And they said, this is women's equal pay day. But if you're African-American, that's when your equal pay day is. It's in August. And if you're Latin American, Latinx, Latina American, yours is November 15th. And if you're Asian American, one of the things that really frustrated me too is they're like, Asian American women are making the most money. Look at them cr crushing it. It's like, no, 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 no. Think about who is doing it. Is it, are they first generation or did they come straight from China? So you didn't really think and get clear about what equal pay means to people. And I talk a lot about that in my book, but yeah, I was like, no, this is a problem because we're doing this comparison game and we're not talking about how we're actually going to make money. So profit and income. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about is separating, uh, separating your savings and checking Se separate it. I don't know. I I wish this is something, this is one of the things I regret not teaching when I taught math class. Like I should have been teaching this. It's probably why I'm not teaching math anymore. But like, I probably should have taught this from day one. I should have told those third graders, listen, the key to understanding money is checking and savings. Like the whole time I did my like personal finance uh, unit, it was all about like start a business uh, do like start, start a business, do, uh, take, well, I forgot what it was. I was like, start a business, take out your, um, tell your parents to start you a, a fund, a savings fund. But I didn't under teach people why or how important it is to separate your, your savings and checkings account. So if you have a business, you have to strategically take out your accounts and make a business account, a business checking and a business savings. And if anything that you're doing with your business, let's say you're going to get a cup of coffee, let's say you're buying pieces of paper, you have to use your business checking account. Do not use your personal one if you're going to use it for your business. See how we talked about like profit versus income? Your company is pro profiting, but you're losing all the income that you made. 
So that's why we're all 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. What do you do with that checkings and savings? Well, it's up to you. A lot of people say save three to six months of savings, but I think that's really degrading because I think what a lot of people do, especially when you tell people they need a savings account or an emergency account, people are so rude. Like people don't understand. Yes, ch yeah, check your, your savings and checking for sure. Uh, people don't understand how much money is built into trauma, how much money is built into uh, our, our families. So, of course, we're going to forget the thing that seems really simple to break it up. A lot of us just say, like, I don't want to look at my money because I don't want to look at my money. I'm going to push it away. Or a lot of people say, I'm going to let mint.com or I'm going to let you need a budget handle it. And it's like, no, you need to actually separate all of these pieces in your, your business, your finances. If you have a partner, you need to separate those. And then the next step from talking about separating your savings and checkings accounts, sometimes don't even look at your savings account because your savings account is there for emergencies. But what if you have like a financial hiccup and your financial hiccup is, because these are the things that really mess up my money. Your financial hiccup is like you get a flat tire or your financial hiccup is, um, I got a good example. So one of my friends, uh, I had to pick up one of my friend's kids from school, but they needed like all this extra, they needed something and they asked me to pay them back and my budget was super strict. So I was like, no, I said, no. And I said, you know what? I really should just use my WTF fund, which is separate from my emergency fund, which is separate from my checkings account. And give that that kid money and then I'll get the money back. So like actually think about those pieces. What the WTF fund and you can actually label it on any bank account. Like what is the prompt like how can I save myself out of this situation? And they, I think it's like once every quarter people deal with it more than uh one or two or the financial hiccups. I think yeah, I think it's one one time out of every quarter we have financial hiccups and it can be as simple as running out a lot of a lot of clothes or you gain weight and you have to buy new clothes like that is a wtf fun so think about that now uh the last two they're going to be really simple so let me recap so one understand the difference between profit and income two separate savings and checking account like actually save it check it doesn't cost that much money to do that. Sometimes it costs twenty five dollars to separate it. Uh, and three is schedule one time a week to look at your money. At least just start, like after this conversation, go on Wells Fargo or whatever you need to go on. Look at your money. I'm about to do it right after this because I always schedule my money dates directly underneath uh, these conversations. So look at your money. And it's sometimes not fun at all. So look at it and see where you are. Now, for some people, they look at it every single, every single time. And because they look at their money every single day, all the time, they're more aware of it. I personally write down all of my money. So let me find, let, 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 let me find mine. Because I typically write all my money down. Um, and I have a business and a budget. And I use Mint. Uh, no, I actually use you need a budget now. So I use you need a budget, but for my my day to day, I'm gonna block my stuff my my day to day. I would I just write it out every place that I go. <laughs> I just write out my budget, so I actually am writing. It's old time, old school. This is how much money I spent. Sometimes I forget. But the point is, is that I write out my budget and I make it look cute with whatever this little pig thing is. I got it from Pinterest and I just write it out. The easiest thing you can do to track your money is just write them out. Um, but yeah, just set up that, that day where you look at your money. And if you need a lot of help, like let's say you have no money and 
you can't even afford, you say you can't even afford bread, you can't even afford air. There are a couple of places that can help you. There's Debtors Anonymous, there's Under Earners Anonymous. You can just look those up. Both of those places, even if you're making six figures, 12 step programs, let me tell you, people don't talk about this, but 12 step programs will help you realize where your money's going wrong. Even if you're going on social media anonymous, which I found out is a thing, being on social media all the time can drain your money. So start from there. Lastly, oh my gosh, lastly, if do not do this by yourself, I am getting very annoyed by my millennial friends that are consistently asking other people for, not asking anyone for help, and they read something on money.com or they read something on the blog and they incorporated in it and they didn't really ask for help. And I, I did Dave Ramsey. And let me tell you, when I did Dave Ramsey, I already had money saved and I was paying off my debt. I was doing all of that. But because I wasn't investing in anything, I didn't even have a Betterment account because I wasn't investing in anything. Like, and I wasn't asking anyone for help. So I was doing this thing. I was in this program. And because I was in this program, it just looked like I was doing the right thing. But I wasn't, I wasn't investing in myself. I wasn't thinking about, okay, how can I pay off my debt faster? I was like, oh, I figured it out. I know it. And so I shouldn't ask for help. Right? And then you find out, come to find out, I had, it didn't, if I had talked to someone about my student loan debt, I could have been, I could have finished paying off my student loan debt within, if I really think, do the math within six months or six to seven months. I could have just took an extra job. This is why I was teaching. I could have just took an extra job, hustled and put all that money into paying it off. Because when I actually did pay off my undergrad student loans, it didn't even take me long, but I could have asked someone. And then finally I talked to uh, the student loan doctor and she's everywhere too. I talked to Sue Lohandra and she was like, you don't need my help. And I just forgot of looking at direct, lo direct loans. So ask somebody for help. They call that a financial BFF. If you have, need prob you have problems with your taxes and you're still trying to turbo tax, H&R block tax, I'm kind of hating on them right now too. Like, uh, find a CPA. There are tons, you can ask me for CPAs. I know at least eight of them. So think about that. What if one of your friends is actually really good at money? Is the, the saver? Is I have a friend, Marie. Uh, she, when I used to live with her, this girl never spent any money. We were both sharing a room and we were spending like 300 bucks a month living in Berkeley in this really, really terrible house. And she told me she had already, she had already saved a certain amount of money so that she can travel. She had already saved all this money so that she could uh, figure out the next part of her life. And ever since then, even when I talk to her now, I'm like, I know you're still dealing with your money. I know you're still saving up your money. Cause that girl has figured out how to live on a dime. Like she doesn't eat any meat. You don't eat any meat, you save money. Like everything about this girl, that is my financial BFF when it comes to just saving money, being frugal. So find that financial BFF. If you need a health, uh, someone to help you with your health, find a personal trainer. If the personal trainer is too much, find your friend who is actually good at working out. If I didn't work out with my friend Jennifer, my life probably would be really different now. I would work out with her at least twice a week. And that dramatically changed myself and how I viewed weight training, how I viewed anything that had to do with bettering myself. I spent the time and money. And because of that, I ended up saving more money. I didn't even have to go to a personal trainer at that time. All I needed to do was work out with someone else to figure out the problems. So, y'all. I know, nope, not that many people want to hear this because it is financial wellness. When they, but whenever people talk about money, uh, everyone gets stressed out. So one of the closest takeaways, the so first takeaway that you should do is just literally look at your bank account after this conversation. 
the second second or third thing that she could do i have a podcast it is called the money and flow podcast the money and flow podcast talks a lot about people's money stories we talk about the true cost of sex we talk about the uh, latinx money story We, we try to figure out how can we help women and women of color with their their health and wealth and how that translates right i know tons of y'all are some whole foods folks and not understanding that you could go to thrive market and get the same whole food stuff for half the price so that's what we talk about on the podcast that's everywhere you can type in money and flow because i really believe that we should take the hustle out of living and enjoy the money and flow part the last thing is i am actually working on a program or a project where i'm dealing and working with successful entrepreneurs, and then also working with high achieving women. And because I'm dealing with these high stressful people, these type A people, we have a program that talks about money, but it's more about talking about systems because that's my specialty is organization. I can recondo your house. I could minimize your house, whatever you need. So uh, I will post more of that in future conversations. So that's it. Uh, profit versus income, separate savings in business, schedule time once a week, find somebody to talk to about your money. And then fourth, find that financial BFF. Just you could start small or move into a bigger thing. But the truth is, is that I care about you. And most of us aren't talking about our money to our friends except when we lose money so that's it all right take care yep